friends welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before I'm Erin and for today's video we are going to be talking about Post Malone now Post Malone if you don't know who he is he is a singer slash rapper artist I really enjoy his music and the poor guy has had an awful string of bad luck lately and you may be asking what I'm talking about and I'll go over that in just a second however there is a chance that this is not just bad luck seems that our buddy Posty might be cursed. So I'm sure if you are a fan of Post Malone, you have been following his Twitter and you have seen some news as to what has gone on with him lately. So way back in August of this year, the day after the MTV Video Music Awards in New York City, Post Malone's private jet was taking off out of Teterboro Airport in New Jersey, and they were set to go across the pond to England, I believe. Yes. So, upon takeoff, two of the plane's wheels, they blew up, so he blew two tires. And that's not a good thing to have happen, especially when you eventually need to land. So there was this big commotion over what they were gonna do and what they ended up doing was flying the plane around the area to burn off and dump some fuel. So, I mean, the reality is of why they want you to burn fuel is so if you crash, there's not as big of a an explosion, if you will. And this plane had enough fuel in it to get all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. So that's a decent amount of fuel. So they ordered the jet to keep flying to burn off fuel before they start an emergency landing. So the plane actually flew around for about four hours before they decided that they were going to an attempt emergency landing. The plane ended up doing the emergency landing at Stewart Airport, which is in Newburgh, New York, which is by my hometown. So I actually watched on, I think I watched on Facebook, I actually watched the plane land. Now the plane landed with no result, so it didn't crash obviously, and everything was right in the world. So that's good. Nobody wants to see poor Posty not on this planet because, you know, we want his music around. But anyway, so that was number one with his bad luck. Good evening, I'm Dick Brennan, in for Maurice Dubois. And I'm Christine Johnson. We begin with that breaking news, the plane that blew its tires on takeoff from Teterboro Airport. Landed safely a little over an hour ago at Stewart Airport in New Windsor, Orange County, New York. 16 people were on board, including rapper Post Malone. The entourage of rap star Post Malone thanking the crew that landed them safely at Stewart Airport in Orange County, New York. The Gulfstream 4 debt carrying 16 people safely touched down around 4 p.m. after several hours of uncertainty in the air. A flight tracking service shows the jet still circling more than two hours later over Long Island Sound and Connecticut. The flight was eventually diverted to Stewart in Orange County, where fans waited nervously to watch the rapper's plane land. So flash forward two weeks later after this incident with the airplane, Post got into a pretty terrible car wreck. So that's like a $300,000 car that went down the drain. Now Post was not driving in this accident. Apparently his assistant was, and nobody was hurt in either car, which is a good thing. And as far as I know, nobody was under the influence or anything. And they, I don't, I couldn't really find any details of the crash other than his Bentley was T-boned by a Kia. Didn't say whose fault was what. They both ended up going through a couple of shrubs and some f and a fence as well. So after this incident, and understandably so, Post Malone tweeted a tweet that said, God must hate me, laugh out loud. So that was incident number two in a two week span. So these are two things where he very easily could have, he could have died. So definitely a bad string of luck there. Well, then a third thing happens. So the third thing that happened is that there was a home invasion. Now this home invasion didn't actually happen at the house that Post Malone was currently living in. However, it did happen in his old house that he used to own or was living in. 
and it was three gun-toting dudes broke into this house in San Fernando Valley and they were asking where Post was. So clearly they were trying to target Post Malone. They ended up stealing about $20,000 worth of stuff from the current people who are residing in the house, which definitely sucks for them. But obviously, these people were looking for Post. There's a good possibility that they may have been looking to harm him. So that's time number three with a brush of death for Post Malone. And that break-in happened toward the beginning of September. So as I said in the beginning of the video, there is a good chance that this is not just a string of bad luck and that Post may be cursed. Cursed by what, you may be asking. Well, Zach Bagans, the host from the show Ghost Adventures, brought Post Malone to his haunted museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, while he was there, he took him around the museum to his different artifacts, and one of the ones that they happened to go into holds the world's, quote unquote, the world's most haunted object, which is a Dybbuk box. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail over what a Dybbuk box is because I would like to do a whole video on that in itself, but the long and the short of it is, is a Dybbuk box is something that people from Jewish faith have that holds essentially a demon inside of it or a bad malevolent spirit. So nothing good comes from Divic boxes is the short story of this all. And it has something bad attached to it. Now you're not supposed to touch Divic boxes. You're not supposed to open the Divic boxes. You're not supposed to do any of that. But we all know that Zach is a pretty daring guy. He does the whole paranormal thing for the living. So he may have touched the Divic box a time or two. Now I'm going to show you the video from when Post was in the room with Zach during this time with the Dybbuk box. Clearly Post is freaking out. Meanwhile, Zach seems to be in a trance and touching the Dybbuk box. Well, at one point, Post ends up touching Zach, which Zach says could very well have cursed Post himself because whatever was in the Dybbuk box could have went right through Zach and to Post Malone. Like I said, Dybbuk boxes are nothing but bad news, so there is a good chance that that cursed object is what has cursed Post Malone. And you may be asking what, what's so special about this particular Dybbuk box? Why is it the most haunted object in the world? Well, like I said, nothing good has come to any owners of this Dybbuk box. I'm going to be doing a whole video on it, so like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. but nothing good has come to any of the owners of it. And while Post is not the owner, he did come in contact with the owner of said Dybbuk box and bad things started to happen to him. Now this Dybbuk box that's in question is actually the box that was behind the motivation for making the movie The Possession. If you haven't seen that movie before, I recommend you check it out. It's definitely creepy and it goes over what can happen with a Dybbuk box, which like I said, is nothing good involves bad spirits, essentially a demon that is supposed to be housed in said box. So we'll see what happens with Post Malone from here on out. Hopefully everything goes fine because like I said, nobody wants to see Post hurt, injured, or even worse than that. Maybe he'll just go with the whole like bad things happen in threes. That happens to me a lot. So he would be under, you know, that would be three things, so he should be good to go as far as that goes if he's not cursed by said box. But we'll see what happens from there. The video footage from the Haunted Museum when he is there with Zach is definitely creepy and you can definitely tell that he's kind of freaking out there and supposedly what Zach said is that Post was pretty convinced that he saw a dark or black figure that he knew was no good follow them out of the museum that night. 
So like I said, I hope for post's sake that it just went home with Zach. I'm sorry, Zach, but I hope for post's sake it just went home with Zach. He obviously can handle such things a little bit better than somebody who doesn't deal with paranormal stuff, you know, day in and day out like Zach does. But that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to do a quick thing on why it is that Post Malone may be cursed. If you liked this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And I will catch you next time, guys. Bye!